Hello, welcome to video 5, Beta Decay. Beta particles are released during beta decay. Pretty obvious. Now, what are beta particles? They're fast moving particles that are equivalent to an electron. They are an electron. And by fast moving, we're saying that they'll be moving at close to 90% of the speed of light, which is pretty fast. After beta decay, the mass number of the daughter nucleus remains the same as the parent nucleus. So we don't change the mass number, but we increase the atomic number. That's in words. We'll look at it in, in an equation. But here's a figure. This is what it is. There's our parent nucleus. There's our daughter. And there's a tiny little beta particle. Now, you've got to ask yourself, hang on, this is an electron. The nucleus contains protons and neutrons. No electrons. How come an electron comes out of the nucleus? Hmm? How come? And we'll talk about that shortly. It certainly doesn't belong in the nucleus, and that's why it's kicked out at such a great rate of knots. And what does it look like in nuclear equations? Well, previously we mentioned that the symbol for beta decay is an electron with a minus 1 and a 0. And so there it is there. There's our parent, uranium-239, and polonium, I think. Polonium? Could be polonium. Or polonium. I think that might be polonium. 234, giving you your daughter plus your beta particle. And notice that here the numbers, 92, have to add up. So the numbers to the left of the arrow have to equal the numbers to the right of the arrow above and below the line. So 92 equals 93 plus minus 1 and 91 equals 92 plus minus 1 whereas on the top 239 equals 239 plus 0. That minus 1 is important for that reason. Now if we just looked at a general one this is a general equation uh, where we have Z is the atomic number, A is the mass number, so the daughter isotope will always have Z plus 1. And although it's not shown here, again, energy is given off. You can either just write energy or you can put a little photon symbol, a gamma particle there as well. Ooh, that's interesting. Not interested in that, are you? <laughs> Sometimes these laptops. Right, so the secret of beta decay is a neutron in the nucleus turns into a proton and an electron. And that's what happens when beta decay occurs. Inside the nucleus, one neutron, for one reason or another, suddenly wants to become a proton. And because it, be it becomes a proton, there's an excess of an electron. And this is how we write it as a nuclear equation. A neutron becomes a proton plus an electron. Now in positron decay, it's the opposite. A proton becomes a neutron and you get a positron. And, but that's outside of our course. And this is where the minus one comes from. Because this is a nuclear equation, the top numbers on each side have to equal and the bottom numbers have to equal. Now if you have a zero there and a proton here with a one, to make that zero, you need that minus one. So that minus one is just an artifact of the fact that we like what have to balance the equation. And that minus one doesn't tell us anything about the electron, it's just solely there to make the equation balance. But we have to include it. Okay, a neutron becomes a proton plus an electron. And so here we can see it. Now here's another symbol for beta. I wouldn't recommend you use this one. Um, again, use this one down here. This is the preferred version that we use. And you can see that that minus one is important because it's got to add up to 90. Beta decay. So let's learn a little bit about beta decay. Well, we already know that it's a neutron decaying to a proton and electron. It's ejected at high speed because it doesn't belong there. It just gets kicked out, and at about 90% of the speed of light. Um, we change the mass number and the atomic number accordingly. And another type, beta plus decay. So 
generally speaking, we would call the beta decay we've just been talking about as beta minus decay, but in Tasmania we just call it beta decay um, because there is beta positive decay, which is producing a positron. Um, but again, that's outside of our course, unfortunately, I would say. So beta particles and positrons travel quite fast and penetrate reasonable distances because they're so small and traveling so fast they can get through lots of things because most of matter is nothing and so they go a long way before they actually interact with any matter they are stopped by a layer of aluminium now that compares to alpha which was a piece of paper um, or thick cardboard they can go a few centimeters into human flesh as hazards they're quite dangerously dangerous externally and internally they've got reasonable penetration so if you have a beta emitter close to your skin it doesn't just hurt your skin it can affect uh, things underneath your skin and some of your organs are quite close to the surface so you don't want to get uh, too high a dose um, and uh, even though it's not as ionizing as alpha it can cause ionization In the next video, we're going to talk about gamma decay, the last one that we have to know about. See ya!